What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel for another FM22 rebuild challenge. If you've not seen these on the channel before, this is where we take a team that is struggling and we try and make them great again. A historically good team ideally and this time we are taking the challenge of League 1 Bolton Wanderers. Now for me, Bolton used to be a Premier League team established season in and season out. Big Sam, JJ Okocha, Ivan Campo, Kevin Nolan. These are the names that I associate with Bolton Wanderers. Recently, they've fallen on some hard times. They are now in League One. It's our job today to take them, take them back to the promised land, back to the Premier League and see how we can get on with them. This is going to be a longer rebuild, so I'm going to jump, chuck this out there already. It's going to be a 10-year rebuild. It's going to be a long, long episode. So if you do like the rebuilds on the channel, please do drop a like down below. Get in that subscribe button if you are new around here. Let's get into it. This is Bolton Wanderers Rebuild. So guys, here we are at the start of everything. We are Bolton Wanderers, as I've said. If we go on the club info and take a look at their overview, as you can see, consistently a Premier League team here um, until when is this? 2011-2012, uh, when they were relegated to the Championship. Then they were relegated down into League One in 2015-2016. Came back up and then got relegated again and again uh, so they were in skybet league two last season and they are now working their way back up this is kind of the i've taken over a redemption arc and i'm going to try and take it all the way back to the premier league that is the goal at the very least anyway they have won the fa cup four times most recently i say recently in 1958 they are uh, three times holders of the skybet championship one time holder of skybet league one we obviously want to get that done this time around they've won the community shield once and they've also won the papa john's uh, trophy or the league cup or however you know this trophy um coca-cola cup um all sorts it, 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 this has been everything this is whatever the sponsor it, it's been on here for sure um so we are gonna go and try and get Bolton Wanderers back in the Premier League. As I said, this period of success here for me, Sam Allardyce doing doing the work um, is is basically our match for Bolton, and then the relegations and stuff. And as I said, League Two last season, this is their redemption arc. Um, in terms of some of the squad and some of the players, it's not great, is it? Um, if we go into the let's go into the tactic. Let's talk about the tactic first of all. I'm going to be running the GYRFM Thanos tactic. You guys know how we do these tactics with Gareth. Uh, on the channel we bring them out and i'm using them in rebuilds again to give them that little bit more uh, publicity and stuff this is a brilliant tactic we've done a few tests with it on the channel please do go and check that one out um it is a very good video very good tactic um and this is kind of it sweeper keeper two attacking fullback central defenders uh, deep line playmaker box box midfielder mezzala two in uh, inside forwards and then the advance forward up top with a quick pick of the best 11 this is what we've got right here right now so we've got james trafford in goal he is on loan from manchester city he's only 18 looks perhaps he looks younger than 18 here uh, but he's on loan from manchester city so we've also got a couple of other players as well getting jones ricardo santos george johnson actually is a very very good player for this level at league one level um so i'm i'm hoping he can do some good stuff here jack declan john josh sheehan is he a uh, former Newport County? Yes, he is. Former Newport County for Josh Sheehan, Kieran Lee, Carl Dempsey. We've got this guy as well. He is on loan from Hamburg, but he has quite a severe injury. He's broken his foot, so he is out for three to four months. Uh, Dapo Af Aflian is how I'm going to say this guy's name on the left-hand side. Uh, former West Ham guy. Uh, looks like he's played in some non-league football matches as well, um, interestingly enough. And then we've got Dion Charles. This is going to be the guy who I'm going to be hoping can fire me back to the Sky Bet Championship. Northern Irish player, three caps for his country. Um, uh, he's okay. He's okay, but he's not brilliant. So I'm hoping he can uh, fire us through alongside this guy, Jean Dardy Bovardson is how I'm going to say this guy's name. Icelandic. I'm sorry if there are any Icelandic people in the comment section watching this video. I have butchered this dude's name. He's got loads of caps for Iceland as well. Um, so yeah, we've got a couple of decent striking options for that League One level. Let's take a look at the league. 
Uh, this is the Skybet League One. We are expected to finish inside the top half, but we'll touch on those uh, club vision bits in a little minute. Um, if we go on to the season preview, this is where we are expected to finish. We are a recently promoted team, so we're hoping that we come in with some momentum and we are predicted to finish eighth. We are 12 to one to win that title. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, if we go and check out the club vision, though, so that you can see what is expected in terms of transfer budget, we don't have any in terms of wage budget. I've got seven thousand pounds a week to work with. Um, I won't be signing anybody this year. I'm hoping that the squad that the actual Bolton manager has built is actually good enough to take them up. This is the club vision five year plan. They want us to sign players to sell for a profit. We can definitely do that. Work within the wage budget and a maximum of one year contracts for players over the age of 30. Don't worry, Bolton, I'll go one better. Uh, sorry, that's 32. I will go one better. I won't give anyone uh, a good contract over 30 anyway. So don't worry about that one. In terms of the current season, top half in League One is what is required from us. Uh, reach the third round of the FA Cup, the, the second second round of the EFL Cup and they don't care about the Papa John's pizza trophy um, so fair play there and also work towards repairing the club's financial damage if we go into their finances and look at their debts and loans they've got 35.4 million pounds worth of debt it is owed to the chairperson of the club um, so we are going to have to try and get that paid back once we get into the Premier League this isn't going to be a problem but until then that could scupper our chances just a little bit so we are going to simulate this first season and see if we can get back into the championship so then guys the first season is done and dusted and we will be returning to the championship we have won the title if you watch the thanos tactic video you would have already been had this spoil for you but we have returned to the championship we won the division we beat Sunderland, uh, a team who obviously are trying to get themselves promoted back to the championship themselves. Maybe another uh, longer term rebuild that we can do on the channel at some stage. But we beat Sunderland. Uh, they had 87 points. We had 94. So obviously we beat them by seven points pretty comfortably uh, getting the job done towards the end of the season. 29 victories, seven draws, 10 losses, 98 goals scored, 56 goals conceded, giving us that goal difference of a plus 42. In terms of some of the other competitions, though, this is how we got on. Knocked out in the third round of the Emirates FA Cup by Luton Town. First round of the Carabao Cup by Burton Albion. And knocked out in the northern section third round by Liverpool's under-23s, who from memory had quite a few good players on the team sheet uh, playing in this under-23s. And Liverpool did win this game on penalties. If we have a look, yeah, they've got Adrian in goal, uh, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a good Liverpool team. It's quite a good Liverpool team to play in this competition. But the main thing for us was that league campaign. If we go onto the home screen, this is the man who got all the goals for us, Elias Kashunga, who is here. Uh, he's from the DR of Congo. Um, actually, looks like a pretty solid player for us. 18 goals, 7 assists in the league. Um, very, very nice return from the winger. Uh, Ricardo Santos is our highest average rated player. Aaron Morley and Dapo were the most assists with 11 apiece. Um, in terms of some of the other stats, we were the best scoring champion uh, team in League One, which is great on the return to the the championship so a very very good season all around to kick things off in terms of the finances going into next year we've got four hundred and ninety-two thousand pounds uh you know what i'm like at this sort of level guys i will probably move all of that into the wage budget and try and pick up as many free agents as humanly possible let's get my head down i'll get those transfers done i will be back for a transfer update for season number two right now so guys, we are back in the championship and we have made some additions. We have started things off by bringing back Josh Vela, former Bolton player. Obviously, he is now back at the club. He's come in. He was released by Shrewsbury Town. He is now a free or was a free agent. He is now a Bolton Wanderers player. Again, coming back in, taking the number seven spot. Pretty good mentally, decent enough physically. I think he could probably do some work in those technicals, but... I think he can do a very good job for us. Also, we got in Samba Kamara, the centre-back. He was released by Civil Sport in Turkey. Uh, Malian International with the one cap, but he is still a Malian International to come inside and play alongside Ricardo Santos and George Johnston. I really wanted just another 
good body to play center back obviously going into the championship uh, we are going to need someone of this kind of caliber a big six foot three good jumping reach good head and i think he could be a danger for us on corners as well and we also brought in nathan holland he was obviously released by west ham nice technically decent physically abysmal mentally so hopefully we can have some work on him um, but again adds to that squad um, no huge uh, outgoings as well um, in terms of two freebies one for 40k and one out on loan so no huge things to talk about just there the main thing for us to talk about competitions we're in carabao cup emirates fa cup and the skybet championship the board expectation we will go over very shortly in that season preview though we are expected to finish 19th they don't actually think that we are going to get relegated but they think that we are going to have a tough time of it. We were promoted alongside Ipswich and, of course, Sunderland, um, and they are expecting us to finish 19th. Don't know if you've noticed this, though. Newcastle relegated from the Premier League. Odds of 1 to 91 to win the division. Uh, there is a reason for that. If I go on to this team, they are managed by Ronald Koeman. But if we look at their squad, right, and go by positions, they signed Andre Onana, very good signing. Vestergaard, they've signed him as well. Uh, this dude from Palace, I can never say his name, Mark Gu Guhi, is how I'm going to say this guy's name. It's wrong, but that's who they've signed. Obviously, they've got people like Dan Byrne and Bruno Gomez, who they'd already signed. Uh, Ryan Gravenberch is a Newcastle player playing in the championship. <sighs> Alex Collado, they've signed from Barcelona again in the championship. Um, it's, it's, yeah, they've kept hold of St. Maximin as well. Chris Woods transfer listed. Callum Wilson's asking to leave, but this team should absolutely annihilate this division. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a rough time. Out, out of curiosity, how many did they sign? Oh, they bought some of these guys going into the championship. Oh, no, no, they got for free. How much did they spend on Gravenberch? 64 million. He's play Have they got Jonathan Tarr? Or have they sold him already? Yes, they've sold him back to Leverkusen. Okay, that is crazy. Some the business that Newcastle are doing and are going to be in that Skybet Championship alongside us. In terms of the club vision, uh, we're struggling with a few bits. Sign players under the age of 23 for the first team. I mean, I am trying, guys, believe me. Work within the wage budget. Yeah, we're not doing that. Repair the club's financial damage. It, despite not working inside the wage budget, we're doing a good job in terms of repairing the financial damage. Avoid relegation in the championship. Reach the fourth round of the FA Cup as a minimum and reach the third round of the EFL Cup. And my contract is up at the end of the season. So if this doesn't go well, this may be the shortest rebuild you will ever see on the channel. I'll be back at the end of season number two. So guys, I don't really know what to say. We've won the championship. It's back to back to back, technically. Promotions, three in a row. The former Bolton manager took them from Skybet League 2 to League 1. I've now taken them from League 1 to the championship and now on to the Premier League. I don't understand how we've won it. It is so, so tight at the top of the table. Here is the table. 88 points for Bolton Wanderers. We are top of the league. Nottingham Forest, 87. Leeds United, 87. Barnsley, 87. The playoff final hasn't happened yet, but it's currently going to be a Leeds versus Middlesbrough. We go up top. 25 victories, 13 draws, and 8 losses for this Bolton team that was predicted to finish 19th. Um, yeah, Newcastle, with all that cash... Got beaten by little old Bolton, hey? Newcastle finishing in seventh. Um, a horrendous result towards the end of the season. Has that? Yeah, they've sat Coman. Okay, interesting. Bristol City relegated as well. As a Bristol City fan, that is pain. Um, so, we go into the we go into the Premier League. Uh, like, I, I don't know how this happened. Obviously, I just simulate these seasons, guys. Um, Bavardson uh, with 15 goals. He was our highest goal-scoring player. Ricardo Santos, again, the highest average rating. Gethin Jones with the most assists. In terms of goals, we are the best goal-scoring team in the championship. I cannot believe that that has happened. Um... And we conceded 51 goals, which was the sixth best. We got a lot of bookings, got a couple of red cards. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. We are going to be playing Premier League football next season. Also, Ipswich, a team that got promoted with us, also in the playoffs. So it's definitely definitely something that can happen, I will say. Um, good result in terms of everything. In terms of the other competitions, not tight in the third round, the FA Cup by Everton. Not tight in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup by Liverpool. Potentially, this could be a good, a good little cup team. 
Uh, but we're going into the Premier League, which means Premier League money has hit the club for the first time in a long while. Uh, 34, just under 35 million for the club to go into the Premier League. I'm probably not going to spend a huge amount of it. It's going to be free transfers again. In terms of that debt and loan, we're at 32 million. So obviously we still do have that to deal with, that we do have that to contend with. Um, but I'm hoping now we are in the Premier League. Premier League money can really help us combat this debt. Um, there's a lot of players that are going to be out of contract. Let's go try and sign them for season number three as we take Bolton Wanderers back into the Premier League. Right, guys, I got to work really, really quickly for the transfers for season number three. I was on it really, really quickly. Uh, Frank Tajot comes in from AC Milan. He currently is not registered, but I will be doing that before the season starts. He comes in, nice all-round striker, can play in the Premier League. I've done him, I've used him before. Six foot three, really nice physicals. Knows where the back of the net is. I'm hoping he can be the guy to lead the line. He, he cost us 800K, could rise to 850K. Spent 120K, which could rise to 130k on charlie good as well he comes in from brentford a very very solid defensive option we really need to start upgrading this squad asap hamza chowdhury comes in from leicester city he was transfer listed 5.5 million pounds for the man with the gorgeous afro he comes in and i'm hoping he can sit in that central midfield spot or the defense uh, the defensive midfield spot and just just run things for us that's my hope with hamza chowdhury uh lewis jr is a new goalkeeper we have our own goalkeeper again now um he's got eight positioning which i don't usually sign on a goalkeeper but um he was uh, looking at good value uh we paid how much money for him 2.9 million uh, which i think is good value he is now valued well over 5 million so young brazilian goalkeeper I think he's worth a punt. Whether or not he will be the goalkeeper for a long time, I don't really want to speculate. Um, Yulan Gomez comes in left back, can play all the way up that left-hand side. Uh, again, another good option. One cap for Colombia. He was transfer listed by Fulham. He comes in to take over in that left back spot. Having played three times in the Premier League last season, didn't really make a impact. So we'll come and hopefully try and make an impact for us. We've also signed Kennedy, the former Chelsea man. Uh, he was um, transfer listed, I believe, from Blackburn Rovers. So he does, yeah, he was uh, transfer listed. 3.4 million for him. Um, I think he's a very good option. Can play on both flanks for us. And I think could cause a little bit of damage on a return to the Premier League. This is the one that I'm really, really happy with here. Yeho uh, Yarmoluk is how I'm going to say this dude's name. I'm sorry, any Ukrainians out there. I butchered this dude's name. He looks like a fantastic prospect. Comes in from uh, Dnipro. Um and yeah brilliant won the kid resolute personality great physicals really good mentals for someone who's 19 years of age uh pretty good technically as well four star current ability five star potential in this bolton wanderers team and he's now valued at 24 to 28 million we paid 5.5 million for him having had a very good season in the ukrainian league last time out in terms of some of the other transfers uh we've still been busy guys so don't you worry there uh conor plia uh, we signed another Ukrainian. He is going to play right back for us. He looks very, very good coming in from Shakhtar. Um, Sam Byram, another right back coming in from Norwich City. He was uh, released. So, again, don't really have to pay a great deal for Sam Byram. Bruno Perez comes in. Another central midfielder. Another five-star potential player to play in that central midfield spot. He was uh, transfer listed, uh, released even, by Porto's B team. Dara O'Shea comes in. Another good Premier League level centre-back, if you ask me. We're going to be scrapping at the bottom. This is the kind of caliber player that I can attract right now. So Dara O'Shea is here and Gonzalo Plata is here as well. Uh, he comes in from Sporting. Very good on both wings. Basically very identical to Nathan Holland, but in my opinion, a little bit of an upgrade. Good technicals, good, good physicals as well. Awful mentals. Really, really bad mentals. 4.8 million we paid Sporting for his services and then we've had a couple of other players go in and out ricardo santos has gone to brescia i think he was a good player for us over the last two seasons but for me he's not premier league quality um so we we shipped him out and changed changed things up 3.6 million we got back for him obviously a lot of the money that we've spent has gone into the wages we're going to go into the tactic obviously we're still running the same tactic without restriction this is the best 11 now so Luis Jr., Conoplia, O'Shea, Johnston, Gomez, Chowdhury, Vela, Yarmoluk, is how I'm going to say this guy's name, Plier, uh, Plata, Holland, and then Tazjut up top. So this is the team that we are going to be taking to battle in the Premier League. 
the Premier League. Okay, so fight bravely against relegation. The season preview says we are 900 to one to stay in this division. Obviously, we don't have any players in the media dream 11. Why would we? Um, this is the team. This is this is the hope. This is the season. Can we stay in the Premier League? To be honest, I'd take a couple of seasons of bouncing up and down um, because the finances have still got 4.4 million left, but we're, we're spending almost 400 and 500k on wages a week now. 44 million pounds in net debt is gone up. Um, yeah. Mm. Premier League money, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully that can help us. Um, but yeah, going into the Premier League season, fingers crossed for a good year. And fingers crossed we can avoid relegation. So then end of the season and we have avoided relegation relatively comfortably in the end. We didn't finish very high up the division. We finished in 16th, which is actually one place lower than Spurs um, but we avoided relegation relatively comfortably Forest, Middlesbrough and Burnley all go down um, and we actually finished the season with a minus nine goal difference which I don't think is too bad first time back into the Premier League for Bolton Wanderers. If we go and look, take a look at all of our competitions, though, obviously there is the Premier League finishing down in 16th. Perez uh, from central midfield scoring a hatful for us. 13 goals, 7 assists. He was very, very good. The youngster out of Porto. Third round, we got bounced in the FA Cup by Reading and fourth round in the Carabao Cup again by Liverpool. Um, I think this is a fantastic season. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments. But I really do think this is a great season with Bolton in the Premier League for the first time in only 2024. Um, I think we've done really, really well. 10 victories, uh, 11 draws, 17 defeats. We got some good victories there. We won 4-1 away at Manchester United. That's a very, very good victory. Um, and we got some good results as well in terms of the draws. So I think we're progressing nicely. We were higher at the start of the season. And then the little light teams figured us out. And then it's kind of been a little bit catastrophic towards the end of the year. This is a bad spell here in December as well. But we do stay in the division. We do stay in the Premier League, which again gives us that little bit more cash. 50 million of it, to be precise. And our overall balance is cleared because net debt, zero. Um, I don't understand how this has happened. It's still the same chairperson loan. Um, we've still got 31, of it million, 31 million of it there, uh, but the net debt's gone. And our overall balance is now 61 million. As I said, Premier League money, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be season four coming up next. Let's get into it. So we had 50 million to spend and we went out and spent it all pretty much. Um, so we have Alvaro Fernandez, the goalkeeper. As I said, I wasn't overly happy with the goalkeeper. That eight positioning, I just couldn't deal with it. Um, so we went out and signed Alvaro Fernandez, Spanish goalkeeper coming in from Husca for 3.3 million pounds. That, that business was done really, really quickly, wrapped up on the si uh, 18th of June uh, pretty quickly. We've also gone out and signed some other players though. Tyler, uh, Taylor Hardwood Bayless um, coming out of Manchester City. He was being released, so we snapped him up on a free transfer looks like a good player Eddie Salcedo comes in on a free transfer as well from Inter Milan very very good player nicely well-rounded can play in a couple of different positions for us great option for us um Edith, uh either Aiden comes in from Verda Bremen now this guy for 20 years of age I think he's got phenomenal stats phenomenal attributes he can be that deep line playmaker that we need here great passing great technique good tackling as well really solid mentals really nice physicals he's six foot comes deep to get the ball he's a good playmaker from that defensive midfield spot and he's five star potential um how much money did we pay for him 2.2 million and by taking him from Verda bremen he is now valued at 34 to 45 million pounds for this lad uh, so i think that's a good bit of business luca pellegrini are you doing a save on fm 22 this year if you don't pick up luca pellegrini at some point um He'd gone from Juve to Brentford. We have now picked him up. Uh, we paid Brentford 10.5 million for his services. And then the big spend. Some of this is installments, but Christos Tholos comes in. He can play on that left-hand side. He can play up front. He can play on the right if he has to. Norwich were relegated, so we picked him up. Uh, 44.5 million pounds. I think it's a good investment. He had a good year in that championship last time out. Um, and I think he can go from strength to strength in the Premier League. Now he's that little bit older, 22 years of age. A couple of free transfers going out. Some of the guys that haven't worked for me. Julian Gomez is gone. MJ Williams gone. Owen Jenkins gone. Um, going into season number four. I feel like we've strengthened the team. I'm not going to show you the team just yet. 
uh, we'll, we'll probably take a look at that next year. In terms of that Premier League, though, in that season preview, this is how we're looking. 900 to 1. Again, still nobody in this media dream 11, obviously. Um, and they're thinking we're going to do really, really badly. Newcastle promoted, though, back into the Premier League. They have <laughs> got also 50 to 1 to, to win the Premier League and are predicted to finish 7th. But obviously, they do have big cash money. Um, so... If we take a look at things and that club vision, as is what is expected from us, if we go into it here, you can kind of see sell players for a profit. They're actually pleased with that. I don't understand why. We're signing players under the age of 23 for the first team. We are definitely doing that. Work within the wage budget. Yeah, not doing that, but we need to stay in the Premier League. Um, in terms of this season, though, fight bravely against relegation in the Premier League. Fourth round and third round of the cup competitions. Contract over again. But they are working on building us a new stadium, which will be very, very good. Now we are back into the Premier League. Let's get this season done. I'll see you at the end of it. I think we've done a little bit better than Premier League Survival. We have actually finished in 13th this year. A massive performance in season number four of this Bolton Wanderers rebuild. 47 points for us. A little bit closer to the relegation zone actually than last season. But ultimately, we do survive. We are no longer in that sort of immediate battle, finishing in a decent little position. Minus seven goal difference. Again, we picked up some good victories. Again, we beat Manchester United. I don't know how it happened. Uh, we beat Newcastle as well who get relegated again um which is really really interesting and also very very nice they spent an absolute shed load of money um in terms of some of the other competitions though knocked out in the fourth round of the fa cup by liverpool knocked out in the quarters of the carabao by arsenal it seems like every cup competition at the moment we are coming up against liverpool um and chelsea win the league but who cares um who cares eh? 47 points for us we're quite a ways away from those european spots we are still technically closer to that relegation zone so another bit of work needs to be done going into this next season 63.5 million pounds in that transfer kitty the debt is back up we've got a bank loan that's for the stadium so um yeah yeah, we've got debt again, but hopefully we get a nice shiny stadium out of it. In terms of the summary, though, 63.5 million. Let's get to spending that going into season number five, our third back in the Premier League. So then, guys, we're going into season number five, and I always do this in these rebuild challenges. I'm interested to see how many of you get to this stage of the video. So if you are still here, still watching right now, comment down below in that comment section. Big Sam is my hero. So... Please let me know. I love Big Sam. Um, had a terrible time as England manager after winning his only game. Uh, but very good Bolsa manager. So Big Sam is my hero. Down in the comments if you're still watching this rebuild going into season number five. And season number five, I think it's going to be interesting. If we go into the transfers and take a look at the transfer history, this is how we've been working, guys. Um, so obviously there's some some players here. Uh, Christos Solis was the last one last season. Eric Garcia comes in from Bayern's second team. 16.25 million for the former Man City former Barcelona youngster not really a youngster anymore 24 years of age still younger than me um nice physicals nice mentals we all know about Eric Garcia I think he's a great player uh will offer us a lot in that right back spot uh, Raul Moro comes in from Real Madrid transfer listed this young Spaniard can play on both flanks um, I think he can be a really really great asset for us in the Premier League good on both feet um yeah really think he can add a little bit of dynamic ability in those wide spaces we've also signed this guy julian chabot um he is a german uh player um nice big six foot five 17 jumping reach 16 headed you can kind of see what i've signed him for a uh, former sampdoria player uh, we paid 4.1 million pounds for him to bring him to the premier league in terms of some of the others we also signed bruno gomerez now i did say to you that uh, newcastle united got relegated we went and bought him i think he's another good option for us as a deep line playmaker can play in central midfield can play center back if he absolutely has to 25 million to a relegated newcastle united he played okay in the premier league last season um, i'm hoping he can have another good year for us there um in terms of the competitions obviously it's the same three competitions we are expected to avoid or expecting to avoid relegation from the premier league We've dropped our odds though, 450 to 1 going into season number 5. Obviously still don't have anybody in these Media Dream 11, but I will start turning my attention to new gens very, very soon um, because I think they are going to be where the money is at. Um, in terms of this club vision though, going into this season, 
a couple of things have changed but not a huge amount we aren't working within the wage budget they are obviously still building this new stadium if i go into the yes they are building the stadium which will be ready at the end of this year june 2028 this stadium the new stadium is being built so that is nice that is obviously why we are in so much debt again they want us to try and avoid relegation from the premier league fifth round of the fa cup and fourth round of the efl cup they are slowly ticking up their expectation as we finish that little bit higher up the premier league table this is the team though as i said i will show you the team every other season because we have had some upheaval and some transfers and stuff so fernandez is in goal eric garcia hardwood bayless uh, is the centre back alongside Shabot, Pellegrini at left back, Bruno Gomez, Chaudhry, whoops, uh, Yarmuluk is there, Plata, Moro, and Solis is playing up top as a striker. We've got some options now. We've got a little bit, a bit, little bit more depth. I'm hoping we can have a really good run at the Premier League going into this season. I'll see you at the end of the year. A slight improvement on last season sees us up into 11th for this season. A slightly worse goal difference, but a much better points return. 51 points for us sees us only 6 points outside the European places and considerably safe versus those relegation spots. Benjamin Sesko, now a Arsenal player. That's going to be a problem for us moving forward. Um, but in terms of the Premier League, I think we've done pretty well here. Uh, 15 victories for us throughout the course of the season. We beat Chelsea at home. We beat Everton as well. Um, both of these teams are usually doing pretty well in these simulations. Chelsea are up in fifth. Everton are battling out with us. West Brom, Watford and Swansea get relegated. Sorry, Gareth. Just the one win in the season for Swansea away at Watford, who were also relegated. In terms of the other competition, fifth round the FA Cup by Palace. Third round of the Carabao Cup by Southampton. These are going to start ticking over quite quickly now, guys, because once we're in the Premier League, if we're not really accomplishing a great deal, it will just be a, this is where we stopped in the these are the players we bought. This is how we finish kind of thing. Uh, Liverpool do win the Premier League though as well this season. Going into next year, the stadium will be ready. It's not quite ready just yet, uh, but we've got £35.1 million uh, for that. Obviously, the net debt's going up. The loan, the bank loan for the stadium's just destroying my life. Um, it's, it's, it's a tough one. It's a really tough one. Uh, but, oh, the st oh, oh, started ages ago. That stadium's not going to be ready for a long time. Oh, that's another couple seasons. Oh, don't worry about the stadium. That's not coming. We are just going to cripple ourselves in the time it takes to build the stadium. I hope it's a good stadium because sometimes when this happens, they're not good stadiums. Let's move on to season number six. We've got 35 million to spend. Let's go spend it. So we go into season number six and I have spent cash guys and a large portion of that is because we've actually made some money as well alvaro fernandez goes to newcastle for 20 million uh connor player goes to bernie for 14.75 million daro shea's gone george johnson's gone eddie salcedo's gone kennedy's gone dion charles is gone a lot of the players that we brought in to get us to this point are being shipped out um obviously bruno gomez we already touched on and i said we were going to start turning our attention to new gens so please welcome enrique dibiasi comes in from san lorenzo he does have a new face because some of the new faces that i've already loaded up from the zealand new gan face pack are already here he is a wonder kid coming in from uh, san lorenzo in argentina he's only 19 years of age he's four star current ability five star potential hence why we let that dude go to newcastle i think ultimately a very very good pickup for us i think he's going to be a goalkeeper for us for the remainder of this save to be honest dibiase i think he's a very very good good pickup and can grow as well we spent a lot of cash here though uh, we also spent 80 eight zero million on this guy domingo from atleti now this guy needs some work, granted. I think he can be the best striker in the world. Let me know down in the comments what you think of Domingo as well. 19 years of age. Yes, he's a striker with nine finishing. I will work on that, believe me. Mentals out the wazoo for a 19-year-old. Great physicals as well. Tries killer balls, come deep to get the ball. He's probably, ultimately, better suited to play a central attack in midfield role, but I don't have one in this tactic, and I'm not going to change it. Um, so he will be playing up top for us. Um, I think he's a very good player. We spent a lot of cash on him. He wanted to be number seven. He is. I just hope he pays off. That's all I want to know. I just hope he pays off. 
in terms of some of the other transfers, we've also signed this guy, Oscar Valenti. He is another new gen. He comes out of Barcelona, a left back. Can't really cross, but can do everything else that I need him to do. Really nice mentally. Good physically as well. Um, technically, pretty good as well. He's 21 years of age. We went big. We spent money in Spain uh, to pull in some of these players. Some of the others uh, that we had sold, Luca Pellegrini goes to Liverpool, hence why we spent the money on Valenti. Um, and in terms of some of the other cash, we've got Julian Gomez has gone to Forest as well. So again, that requirement is there for that left back. And we've also got a salon clause on Salcedo, but the finances, mm, yeah, it's not good, is it? It's not good. The bank loan is is crippling me, and we've got 72 yeah, million in transfer debt in installments to come. Uh, so I'm being fully transparent. I am kind of crippling the club to to help us progress in the Premier League to make things better for us. Ultimately, uh, the stadium is coming along nicely. Still not there. Won't be there at the end of this season. It will be ready at the end of the next season. As we go in uh, premier league though avoid relegation is the expectation again or at least try to season preview sees us at 450 to one so the odds haven't improved at all um so we're gonna have to see what we can do uh recently promoted norwich west ham and newcastle are back ladies and gentlemen uh back at 50 to one uh to win the premier league and I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. They've been relegated so many times in this save already. I wouldn't put it past them going down again. I'm um, in terms of the club vision. All the contract, uh, all the competitions are very much the same. Uh, they want us to avoid relegation in the Prem, fifth and fourth round in the cups, respectively. But in terms of everything else, pretty happy. Let's see you at the end of the season. So it's the end of season six and the money that we've spent has obviously done us some good because we have finished up in ninth in the Premier League. 58 points. So again, we are a little bit off of those Champions League or European places. I don't think Champions League realist is realistic for us, to be honest. Chelsea get into the Champions League despite finishing eighth. So they've obviously won the Champions League or the Europa League. Just out of curiosity, I want to see. They've got Andre Villas-Boas as their manager again. Uh, yeah, so they won the Europa League. So they go into the Champions League via winning the Europa League. So we've got an extra Champions League spot as Arsenal win the title this year. But yeah, we finish in ninth. 16 victories, 10 draws, 12 losses, plus four goal difference. First time we've had a plus goal difference this year. Um, so I'm hoping the big spending was worth it. Um, in terms of all competitions, fifth round of the FA Cup, semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. Uh, we were knocked out by West Brom, who ultimately lost to Everton. Uh, really, really disappointing. And the board expectations actually changed to mid-table now. Um, so in terms of if we go onto the home screen, Tejut is still our top goal scorer. 17 goals for him. Shabot is our uh, highest average rating. And Raul Moro is chipping in very, very nicely. 18 assists for him in all competitions, along with his eight goals from those flanks. So we're doing quite well. We're doing quite well. Sixth best in terms of goals scored in the Premier League. And we're trying to trying to claw back some of the some of the stuff on some of these big boys. And um, if we go into the club vision, the stadium is still progressing quite nicely. But transfer budget is back, ladies and gents. 66 million pounds um, despite chucking loads at Domingo. Uh, the debts and loans, the net debt for some reason. I don't under I don't know what's happened here. We still have the bank loan, but the chairman debt's gone. The transfer debt is still there. I'm not sure what's happened. This is what happens when you simulate. I think we've been taken over, but I don't actually know for certain. I think we've been taken over, but as I said, I don't know. I simulate the whole year, so I have no idea what's gone on. I just know that the debt has d evaporated. Um, it looks like they've paid for the debt going into the stadium. Obviously, we are still at the University of Bolton Stadium. That will be changing at the end of next season. And our team's pretty good. I'm really happy with where our team is at right here, right now. Um, let's go into the next season. Season number seven, £66 million pounds to spend. You know I can spend it. Let's pick up some more new gens. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am spending this money at Bolton like it is going out of style. And I don't really know how to justify it, to be perfectly honest. We spoke about Valencia last season, but I get my business done really, really quickly. Uh, Borja Ubis has come in, obviously a new gen. He doesn't have a face. I think he's a nice little player. Nice little pickup for us. He comes in from Osasuna in Spain. Spain is my main hunting ground at the moment. They seem to be producing the best new gens. 11.5 million for him from Osasuna good year uh, a good last couple of years actually in la liga prompted me to pay uh, some money for him 
Jonathan Escoto comes in from Leon in Mexico. He was part of the NXGN list. Uh, looks quite good, but didn't have this. I didn't know that he wasn't consistent. He's a four and a half star. Potential player at centre-back. He's going to be covered for this first year. He's only 20. He's made 11 appearances for Mexico, so he's a good little pickup. We've also signed this guy, Jorg uh, Jorn Fiskum. Norwegian youngster, 19 years of age. Another five-star potential. Has a lot of good attributes. Comes in from Bodo Glimt. Um, I think he's a good good little pickup. As I said, five-star potential. Has really, really nice attributes already. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about is his light-hearted personality. We will try and do some work on that. Career stats, though. We paid £7.5 million for him. Averaged over a seven last year in the Norwegian leagues, I think. Now it's the time for him to come to the Premier League. Thomas Rajmakers comes in from Willem 2, uh, just under 14 million. He is a winger, can play on both sides, looks tricky, good at crossing, good first touch, can dribble, he's fast. Model citizen personality is exactly what we want. Really nice mentors for a youngster as well. Not yet been capped by the Dutch national team fully, uh, but I think that's coming, especially now he's in the Premier League. Um, Vladimir Dinkov comes in, 3.2 million pounds. We got him in and then sent him straight back out on loan to CSK Sevilla because he couldn't get a work permit to play in England. Uh, he's fast. He's got good determination. He's a wonder kid. He can't finish, but hey, maybe I can turn him into a winger or an inside forward. Who knows? But he's gone back out to CSK uh, Sofia. We sold some players as well. Platter's gone. He's gone to West Brom. Some of the other signings that we've got rid of uh, are all quite smaller uh, smaller ones. Uh, Nathan Holland is one of those who's gone. Lewis Jr., the goalkeeper that we initially signed, he has gone as well. Uh, Bella Rabi is another one, another Dutch youngster that comes into the team. 21 years of age. He comes in from PSV. We spent a lot of cash on him. 40 million four zero million yes i am spending money as i said left right and center hence why if we go here transfer debt 59 million we are spending money fast but we are making money as well the net debt's gone up again it's i i can't keep up with this the money is just it's just just everywhere i don't really understand the stadium will be done at the end of this season which is another big thing for us in terms of the premier league and the tactic and stuff let's have a look at that premier league this season season number seven i think this is now season preview has us 150 to 1 expected to finish 11th still nobody in that media dream 11 but i don't think that's going to happen even at any point in this save um expected to finish 11th so almost top half uh, which is quite nice to see uh, club vision super quick let's touch on that one uh expected to finish mid-table fifth round of the fa cup fourth round of the uh efl trophy uh work within the wage budget we're definitely doing that yeah we've definitely been taken over here at some point haven't we yeah we've definitely been taken over but that's nice to see it's nice to see um what else was i going to show you the team and the tactic here we go so it's changed lots. Now we are in a year number seven in the Premier League. Uh, so we've got DiBiase in goal. Eric Garcia, Hardwood Bayless, Shabot, uh, Valenti, Bruno Gamelez, Chaudhry, Yamalek, uh, Moro, Zolis, and Domingo up top. This guy, he's getting better. He's got 10 finishing now, boys and girls. Uh, but he does have 19 composure. He is very, very consistent. He is a good player for us. Last season in the Premier League, first season in the Premier League, 19 years old, 13 goals, 8 assists. It's not brilliant, but it's good, and he will get better. I think that 80 million is money well spent, if you ask me. Um, hopefully, he gets that a little bit better this season with a full year under his belt. So, season number seven. Let's get into it. I'll see you at the end of the year. Potentially our most disappointing season for a couple of years. We have finished in 13th uh, this season in season number seven in the Premier League. Nine victories, 13 draws, 16 losses, minus nine goal difference. Maybe all these new players coming into the team haven't really had a chance to gel yet. It's not worked and we've dropped down in the table. We're nowhere near that relegation zone. We are 10 points clear of that relegation spot. Uh, but we are further away than we've ever been, in my opinion, from these European spots. 21 points behind Leicester, who finish in seventh. That's just not good enough, especially for the money that we have been paying. Arsenal win back-to-back -back Premier League titles, so fair play to Arsenal. If we go into the home screen, Domingo is our top goal scorer. 14 goals for him. His finishing is getting just a little bit better. It's up to 11 now. Every time I'm hoping you come back and take a look at him, I'm hoping it's changed. Just gone up a little bit each time and hopefully he can actually get better at sticking the ball in the back of the net. 14 goals to assist. It's not good enough for the money that we've spent. He's only 21 and he's been capped by Spain now, so I can't really complain too, too much, but 
yeah, not the best in terms of his output. Um, Emirates FA Cup knocked out in the fourth round by Birmingham, knocked out in the second round of the Carabao by Cup by Leicester. It's just not been a good year for us. Um, but we, we're staying in the Premier League. That's the main thing. Finances, £42 million going into the next season. £62 million in the overall balance. We get a new stadium in a few days. Uh, in 22 days, we get a new stadium, which is fantastic. So when I come back for the start of season number eight, we'll talk about the new stadium as well. I'll see you then in a second. So guys, it's here, season number eight, and we've got our new stadium it is the Nat Loft House Arena. Now, obviously we don't have a picture because it's not a real stadium, but a pretty, pretty nice stadium, 38,903 capacity, built in Bolton, no roof, perfect condition on the pitch very good condition we're grass we've got undersaw heating it was built in 2028 so we have a brand new stadium the nat loft house arena bolton legend nat loft house um so it's nice to have the stadium named after him uh, moving this forward transfer update for season number eight have i spent some money of course i have let's talk about some of the outgoings so uh, some of the bigger outgoings uh, let's arrange these by feet so you can see them over my head Tajut has gone to Feyenoord he's gone Harwood Bayless has gone to Newcastle Luis Junior is one that was last season um, in terms of some of the other outgoings 20 million uh, Aiden a a a so e e e Aiden has gone to Bly uh, Byfeld as well so has Borja Ubis um, I swung and a miss on this guy I thought he was going to be really good didn't really play for us his potential just crashed out of his backside just wasn't good enough aiden a up or a up aiden uh didn't uh didn't really didn't really cut the mustard either despite having so much promise again when we signed him um from verda uh, he made 100 appearances for us but never really got to that next level in terms of the money that we spent, uh, Tino Livermento comes in. We needed a right back. I love this guy in FM. He's not been capped by England in this particular save. Um, 25 years of age. I think he is one of, if not the best right back in this game, if you can pick him up. Uh, very, very good player from Southampton. But this ability comes at a price. £45 million we paid to Southampton for his services. We also signed this guy, David uh, Vinhas center back um we signed him from chelsea looks like he's been out on loan at a couple of clubs portuguese international three appearances for portugal does still count a uh, very nice player good stamina good strength six foot two this is definitely the caliber of center back that we are looking for in the premier league uh 35 million pounds we paid to chelsea uh looks like chelsea have had some good business there with him being out on loan for a couple of years so um 35 million yikes i didn't realize we actually paid that much money for him Okay, uh, quick pick the team without restriction. This is the best 11. Uh, DiBiase, Livermento, Vinhas, Eric Garcia, Valenti, Bruno, Garmeres, Fiscum, Yamalik, uh, Moro, Solis, and Domingo complete the team. We've got a couple of players that are wanted as well. Uh, DiBiase is one that I did want to touch on. He is becoming one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Um, he wants to move to a bigger club. Let's see if anybody does come in for him. Hopefully they don't. He's now got 20 caps for Argentina. As I said, getting to be one of the best goalkeepers in the world. In my opinion, we've got one of the best goalkeepers and we will have one of the best strikers in Domingo uh, once we work on him just that little bit more. Hopefully this is his breakout year for Bolton. But in terms of everything, I think we're really good defensively. That was our biggest weakness at the end of last season. I'm hoping we have addressed it going into season number eight. In terms of the competitions, they are expecting us to finish mid-table. It's kind of, we're all about the Premier League. 200 to 1 to win the league. Um, and we've got the best goalkeeper in the league. So Enrique DiBiase is now the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. I didn't think we'd get anyone in this Media Dream 11. But being able to pick up these new gens early doors has really, really held us in good stead. So... This is the season, season number eight. How do we get on? I'll see you in a sec. I love it when a plan comes together, guys, and we have finished in fifth in the Premier League. I cannot believe that this has happened with Bolton, to be honest. We are going into the Europa League, and we just missed out on a Champions League space by three points, just behind Liverpool. Like, we finished above Tottenham, we finished above Everton, we finished above Chelsea. This is... We're Bolton Wanderers, by the way. Bolton Wanderers. Uh, but there is a lot to update you on this season. We also won the Carabao Cup. I don't know how it happened either. We beat Tottenham in the final. What do we think of Tottenham? Um, and I, yeah, I just... I, this season, man, it's just absolutely 
silly. Um, as I say, though, we do go into that final against Tottenham. Um, Raj, Raj Makers uh, with the goal. Let's have a look at this goal because it's not very often you win a trophy, is it? So it starts off with Dibiase at the back, into Shabot, into Bruno Gomez, ball over the top, and he's in. In on this inside forward spot, and that's a good finish past Lafont, giving us that. Uh, giving us that trophy. Fair play to the boys getting that one done. But yeah, fifth in the Premier League. Winning the Carabao Cup is absolutely crazy. But, but let's go into the transfers. We need to talk about some stuff, guys. Um, we're going to go into the transfer history. Domingo's gone. <sighs> Domingo's gone. I, it, he went mid-season. £96 million to Manchester United. Um Who's surprised? Not me. His mentals. I've never seen a striker with better mentals than this. He's now got 12 finishing. I don't think they're going to play him at striker. I actually genuinely think they're going to play him at central midfield. Um, we paid 80 million for him. We sold him for 96. It is a profit. It's just not a huge amount of profit. I think he's going to go on to do really good things for Manchester United. I think he is potentially one of the best players in this game, in this save file. Uh, but only time will tell on that one. Uh, we also sold some other players as well. Um, the main one, Bruno Gomez, again, for a little bit of cash. So we had to go out and buy someone. So we went out and signed this guy, Juan Rios. Now, he is very much a carbon copy of Domingo. Very good mentally. Uh, can't finish as a striker. I don't know why I'm doing it to myself. They've got very good mentals and they are consistent. So I'm hoping he can be the guy. One cap, zero goals for Spain. Mm, maybe that will change. Hopefully it does change. We also spent some money and we got this guy, Maurice Bohm, or Bohm, uh, to play in central midfield, a German coming out of Cologne. Uh, we spent the Domingo money, 70 million a piece for these guys, um, along with some of our other cash that we had sat there. Um, this is this is in the end of the season, so God knows what I'm going to do in the summer. We've got 28.4 million to spend as well, um, but obviously we did a lot of strengthening of our team in that uh, window, in that uh, January window with Domingo going to Manchester United. It's season number nine coming up now. We have Europa League football. This team needs to be firing on all cylinders. I'll be back with a season nine transfer update right now. So season nine transfer update is here. And one of the things I actually said I wanted to do in this save was to sign a Nigerian. Now, a large portion of that is because of JJ Okocha. Let me know who, if, if you remember who JJ Okocha was. I thought he was brilliant for Bolton. Nigerian international, fantastic player. So that is why I spent £68 million on Samuel Kingsley, who initially is a Sunderland player. I don't understand how Sunderland have manifested this guy but he's gone through palace and he's gone through tottenham and he's now a bolton wanderers player here's the best nigerian in this save in my opinion uh, so we went out and signed him absolutely electric physically he reminds me a lot of yaya Torre. really good physically six foot four he's a beast he tries killer balls plays one twos looks for passing rather than trying to score runs with the ball he's got 17 first touch great long shots just a really good player and he's Nigerian so he ticks so many boxes for me I'm just so glad to bring in Samuel Kingsley uh, and we also signed this guy as well uh, Samir Bukhari on a free transfer from PSG I can't believe this guy was being released either so we've got some really really good players here a couple of other players have left us as well uh, Yarmulik has gone to Benfica again this happens in all my rebuilds I just don't pay attention to the transfers and the contracts and stuff at the same time so he has gone I also need to touch on this guy Kino Laney uh, came through our youth intake. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yes, he did come through our youth intake. Here he is. Came through our youth intake, went out on loan to Huddersfield, played in the championship a full season, uh, played some in the Premier League for us last year. He's gone out on loan to the championship again. Uh, Wolves wanted him. Uh, this is definitely one of the guys for the future coming out of our own youth academy. Uh, 20 years of age, capped by England's under 21s. I think he could be a prospect moving forward. Um, but not this season obviously he's going to go out on loan in the championship we have europa league football obviously because we are england and where the in 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 england and where the coefficient lands we will be straight into the europa league group stages uh but that is absolutely fine if you ask me the board want us to reach the quarterfinals which i think is a little bit steep but we will see the expectation for the premier league is that top half finish if we have a look at that season preview uh we are expected to finish ninth which is obviously in that top half um 
50 to 1 to win the division. I also need to touch on this guy, Eric Sca uh, Sclano, um, Italian striker. They've signed him from Inter via, uh, sorry, yeah, signed him from Inter and he was at Cagliari. I was looking at this guy uh, at some point as well, but then he got snapped up by Inter. So he looks an absolute beast at Manchester City. So do, do keep an eye on him when we get through this season 50 to 1 to win the division though i don't think it's going to happen but especially with the europa league they're disappointed with some of the stuff but this is a club vision reached the quarter finals of the europa league top half of the prem and then quarter finals in the two domestic cup competitions let's jump forward to the end of the season and let's have a look how we get on in season number nine so season number nine has been and gone we've done okay in the premier league we finished in seventh but and this is a big but we won the Europa League. I don't know what this Bolton Wanderers team is. Our form completely nosedive towards the end of the season. But that does mean we are going to be in the Champions League for our 10th and final season. We are knocked out in the semi-finals of the FA Cup by Liverpool. We are knocked out in the quarter-finals of the Carabao Cup by Manchester City. But we scored three against Monaco and we've lifted the Europa League I'm going to watch the goals. We don't watch goals in these things a lot. Um, we scored early, but Wadu equalised. And then Bellarabi and Fiskum scored the goals to see us go on and lift the Europa League trophy. Um, so this is our first goal inside two minutes. Valenti down this left-hand side. Swings it in. Bellarabi with the header down to Bakari. He fires us into a very good lead early, early doors. And Monaco do equalise here through Boadu. Livermento with the ball then. Looks like he's going to give it away and he does. There's Boadu. Oh, that's just catastrophic into Boadu. And yeah, even against a goalkeeper of Dibiase's nature, he's still going to score that opportunity, isn't he? But we come back. The better team. By the looks of things, scoring just before the halftime. Valenti into Bellarabi, who slots it past the goalkeeper at the near post. Um, goalkeeper for Monaco should probably do a little bit better there, but that Valenti is causing some sort of trouble here, isn't he? Second half, ball into Fiskum. He's just won it. He's just bursting forward into the... Oh, it doesn't go into the penalty area, but that is an audacious little chip. To see us lift the Europa League. We're going into the Champions League, boys and girls. I can't believe it. We've, we, we've recovered a lot of the stuff here in terms of the bad goal difference and stuff. But that, that end of the season's really, really cost us, uh, to be honest. We started like a house on fire by the looks of things. And then, yeah, this run towards the end of the season just falls apart. In terms of the knockout stages in the Europa League, though, we beat Juve. Um, we then take on Roma. We beat Roma comfortably. Um, we beat Spurs as well. Win 2-0 at home. Lose. 2-1 uh, away from home and then obviously that result against Monaco in the final uh, which is where who, who plays here I don't know who plays here this is really bad knowledge you guys are going to crucify me but it's somewhere in Germany and you guys are going to crucify me but I don't know who plays here so yikes um but yeah, very good season for season number nine. I can't believe what's happened. We've got some fantastic results here. We beat Manchester United in the cup as well. Um, we're just, well, this is just a really good team, isn't it? Going into season number 10. And in season number 10, we have another £53 million to spend. The debts and loans is massive. I'm sorry if you guys come and take over this save, but the transfer debt's bad. The net debt's bad. It says we got £122 million in net debt, but I don't know where it is because it's not here. So I don't know. We're in debt and I don't know. Um, 53 million. Let's go spend it as we take Bolton Wanderers from League One into the Champions League inside 10 seasons. Right then guys this is the 10th and final transfer update for this season we've been out and we've spent big again alfie divine comes in on a free transfer let's talk about him first and foremost another squad option for that central midfield we played three central midfielders so i need a few players who can play there coming in as a fringe player we're not paying him a huge amount 33k for the premier league at this stage 10 years into the future is pennies really 
Uh, so another good little squad option center back though evan and dicker we definitely upgraded here he is a big big specimen a big meaty man as viking dan would call him 19 jumping reach he's six foot four 13 headed big lad can play left back if i need him to but i hope hopefully hope to god i won't have to play someone this size at left back a big lad looking forward to seeing him do a little bit of damage in this team and Euron timber has come in he's going to play in that whole position the defensive midfield position this guy is electric this year in fm fantastic mentals elite physicals as well great agility great balance uh good passing good tackling good technique this guy's perfect for the role that i need him to play and let's have a look at the role and the team uh, there's not really a huge amount of a difference in it but this is how we're gonna run i think i mm, this is this is how i think we're actually gonna run Where's Livermento? So this is how I think it's going to go. So uh, DiBiase in goal. He is still the, one of the best goalkeepers in the world. He looks brilliant still. Great determination, good personality, fantastic physicals now as well. He's a little bit slow, but does the job for me. Um, Livermento, Eric Garcia, and Dicker, Valenti, Timber, Boehm, uh, Kingsley, the Nigerian superstar, uh, Raj Mekas, and Bellarabi, the two Dutchies uh, behind Rios up front, who uh, still can't really finish, but he's probably just that little bit better in terms of goal return than Domingo. Maybe ten his 10th year is his final breakout year. Competitions-wise, Premier League, Champions League, we're in the Super Cup as uh, Europa League winners, Emirates FA Cup, and the Carabao Cup. Uh, Premier League, they want us to finish inside this top half. 25 to 1 to, to win the division um it's not happening it's, it's not happening we're not winning the premier league i can almost guarantee we're not going to win the premier league um but yeah lots of teams in the champions league 25 to 1 predicted to finish eighth i think it's definitely possible if we go into uh the club vision this is what's expected champions league first knockout round super cup don't care uh premier league top half reached the quarterfinals of the fa cup and the efl cup is now no longer important for Bolton Wanderers and then beyond that they want to see us become recognized as best of the rest and then start qualifying for the Champions League but this is season number 10 let's get it in the books and see how we finish this Bolton Wanderers rebuild so guys season number 10 is in the books and thank you so much if you have stayed here for the entirety of this rebuild i know at this point it's going to be over an hour long so thank you very much for being here i really really do appreciate it you guys do not know how much i appreciate it so thank you very much at the end of the season season number 10 we finish in eighth now it's not the best return in terms of our time in the premier league but i think ultimately playing a part in the champions league was a little bit too much for us we won the uefa super cup we beat psg in that one extra time saw us get that goal um to see us lift the trophy the fact that Bolton Wanderers have their name on this trophy alongside some of the others is crazy we scored all of our goals late by the looks of things um Araspadori gives them the lead Hakimi get, makes it two Samuel Kingsley scores from the spot 86 minutes 87 minutes uh Rios scores and then John Fiskum scores in the 92nd minute to take us to glory in extra time I can't believe that that's happened. We've won the Carabao Cup again for a second time in this 10-year space. Uh, we beat Manchester City again in extra time. Um, I, I, I'm honestly stunned. Uh, Raul Moro scoring that goal, the decisive goal in the 121st minute here. Uh, and Scanlo, the guy who we mentioned earlier, scored a very, very nice goal um for manchester city he looks like a terrific terrific player um but yeah it's, it's, it's season number 10 guys it's just been ridiculous um the premier league did take his toll let's have a look at the champions league though we were in group c uh, michelin dinamo kiev and atalanta we bossed that group as you kind of would expect for a team coming out of the premier league um so we did do well there then we go into the knockouts uh the knockout stages we take on monaco we beat monaco um we take on uh valencia then we beat valencia in the quarterfinals we get ourselves all the way to the semi-finals where in the camp new we lose 3-1 to barcelona we beat them 2-1 back at the nat loft house arena but that is not enough we would have been throwing the kitchen sink at barcelona at this point but we did not get the job done unfortunately so um we not we were knocked out in the semi-finals of the champions league i think this next season 
if you were to take over this save this save will be available in my discord link to that will be at the top of the description come on and join the discord pick up this save 10 years into the future and take bolton to that next level the level that i couldn't achieve with them maybe it's the premier league maybe it is the champions league but obviously that save is there for you guys to do i think this squad is very much built to take it to that next level and just because i'm curious i have to have a look manchester united we have to have a look. Domingo is their captain now. He's got 13 finishing. They are playing him as a central midfielder, which makes me sick because he's got 20 composure. But fair play. Fair play to Domingo. I don't miss you at all, mate. <sighs> but that is where I'm going to leave this rebuild, guys. If you have enjoyed it, as I said, thank you so much for being here for over an hour. Please do drop a like on the video down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are picking up the content for the very first time. And until next weekend, guys, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. I'll see you on another rebuild next Sunday.